All right, welcome. My name is Mike Larnster. I'm the Senior Director of Technology here at Park District 97. Today I'm going to walk through uh, what live streaming would look like in a classroom here at Oak Park um, using Zoom. So I've jumped into Zoom. So we use Zoom um, mainly for our students that are remote, but we'll have it projected up to our Apple TV and our projector set up so that all of our students on site can see the kids or whatever content we're displaying to the students at home as well as on site. So I go into Zoom, I have my normal meeting that our teachers would have set up uh, within their class. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. Um, and before that, I'll, I'll, I'll use our setup for in our classroom. So as you can see, uh, we have projectors, side speakers, and then an Apple TV, a little black box that sits up on top of the projector. That's what all of our classrooms have um, set up, so our teacher is able to wirelessly connect uh, with their computers. There are also connections that we can wire in if there's any issues or anything along there. So the next piece I'll have, a couple of little things, obviously all of our teachers have iPads as well, so they'll be able to use that, and I'll show some of the instructional things that we'll do with the iPads. And then all of our classrooms either have a dock cam or they have a dock cam stand. And again, some things that we'll show around with that. The third piece, and this is the only piece that right now we're looking at needing to purchase, is a microphone. So this in-class microphone, uh, it is plug and play. So what we'll do is we'll set it up in the room. It's great that it's a long cable. Go to our staff MacBook. So again, you can see the MacBook, the same MacBook that our teachers have. Plug it into the USB. Hello, everybody. Perfect. So I'm going to, for purposes of this, I'm going to just use this I, this MacBook, and I'm going to show the classroom um, so you can kind of see. And then we're going to go through these next two little quick demos. So you see the mic is plugged in. That just stays there. Um, again, we got our speakers up on the wall. So students that are at home remote, or if we're ever in the future doing any type of remote learning and distance learning or having a guest speaker from somewhere around the world, they can be using this same type of setup. So again, this, this will be able to be used in the future as well. So as I walk around the room, I'm gonna be talking, and you'll see Ebony up there. And again, as we think about this in the classroom, the teacher's not going to be able to freely walk around the same way that we did pre-COVID. Uh, but for this example is, so as the students are spaced, socially distanced around the room, she can still hear me if the kids are talking. So if I sit at this student's desk, Ebony, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. All right, so if I keep moving around, I won't sit down at every seat, but if I keep talking, again, I'm not super loud, but I am using a voice. You can see I have my mask on. Um, but if I get really quiet, can you hear me now? I can still hear you. So really quiet, mumbling, or, or just talking in a really low tone, and still hear that. So again, as I keep walking around, even a student that may be sitting back here, again, it's distance and for set up purposes, but can you still hear me, Mr. Loft Ms. Lofton? I can still hear you. Thank you, Mr. Right. So now we're going to go through. So we've done the technical piece, the audio, walking through what that looks like. One thing I do want to mention, when we are in the classroom, as you can see, uh, Dr. Lofton does have a computer. It's kind of cracked open because, again, we want to have the Zoom live and stay that way. But you can see another computer and throughout. We would not intend that students on site are sitting on the Zoom and participating that way uh, throughout the day. There may be times, just like we are in our classroom, where the kids are engaging in content as a whole class, whether it may be like a Kahoot or some other type of activity, that students have their device open. Um, and I know hearing from teachers, and as we've been listening to this week and, and getting feedback from them, they talked about different times that they want all of the students on the Zoom to annotate on top of the screen or do certain things. So at those times, they may jump into Zoom and engage on-site and remote uh, specials as well. That would be a time that they would be on the Zoom in the classroom. But again, most of the time when they are on site, it will be that they're not on the Zoom um, and doing that. And you can see now we're going to show, if that happens, how important it is that we use the mic that we talked about earlier and that we're not um, turning the mics on on the computer because of the feedback. So, Dr. Lofton, you want to flip yours up and actually turn on your mic so people can kind of understand like how important it is and what it is. So you start to see that feedback and that issue. Again, even if it's in the far back of the room, I know talking with the high school, 
and D90 and a lot of other districts as we've been planning through this, uh, which is important to note. Uh, IETL, an organization we're part of, we've been learning from them and what they've been doing as they've come on hybrid or remote or full on site or whatever that looks like. We've been talking to a number of districts, and that's where we got some of these, uh, this microphone and different things and ideas from that. So I can click through and just say whiteboard. All right. So now I'm sharing a whiteboard. So now I'm sharing my whiteboard from my iPad, and I can go through and annotate on here. And so not only are students seeing that in class on the large screen, just as they would if we were all in class in our environment, whether we're writing on the board or the teacher is using this and walking around the classroom in the same way, but now our students, um, when they're at home, they're also seeing this because I'm sharing that screen with them. So our kids on site and remote are getting very similar experience, similar content. Our students are not here with us, but they are here with us virtually and continuing to engage. And I know this is the conversation of, this is the tough piece. How do I manage the students? I can see them physically. I know that I can experience that. I've done that for years. And how do I then also continue to work with the students at home and engage them? I think that's going to be that deliberate conversation and training and work that we have of calling on those students and making sure that they're there and engaging them in that conversation and in that work that we have. Um, the work that we've done, again, small group, one-on-ones, full class, like all of those types of instructional strategies continue to remain, it's just going to look different. Um, we'll continue to work and learn and hear from our staff and continue to build those best practices um, and work through what that looks like. But again, I see these are two of the best, like, two things that we can do. Leverage the computer to near that. Let that be static and stay there. Use the iPad to really engage and annotate and pull up different programs, different things that they're going to do, and share that screen because it allows you to be more. I'm going to walk through on the iPad. So I've logged into my iPad through Zoom. Um, so again, teacher would have both of them logged in on their account through Zoom. So what I would do is then go in to uh, share my screen on the iPad. Hit screen. I want to broadcast the Zoom. So I'm now going to broadcast that. And you'll see how it changes up on the screen. All right. So now I'm sharing my screen. Um, again, anything on your iPad then. So anything our teachers have. Again, this is a demo device that's similar to our students, but anything that they may have, then they can go through and show any of those programs or any of those tools that they might have. That's walking through iPad. Um, the one piece that you can also, which is nice, um, when I open up the camera, as we have the dock cam stands in our classrooms, um, to be able to go through and show any content. So if there's if there's activities or whatever they might do, um, again, flip that around for the class. Um, I can zoom in, and again, the same thing that is being done in class. Again, this is a practice for our for families and for I said our staff knows this. This is some similar things that they're doing in their class already, but now I'm just projecting it to my class here, as well as being on the Zoom, so students at home are watching the same thing. Again, I can be calling on them. That's the nice thing of the two devices. So I can use the computer to be seeing what's going on. Kids can be raising their hand in the Zoom room. Um, and then I can be calling on them, or I can call on them and ask them to unmute to talk, which again, our speakers would project their voice to the whole classroom. Um, one piece of talking about how do we manage between the two. Obviously, if kids are in small groups, they can't come together and do that. There may be some collaboration on Google Docs or on some of the different online resources for on-site. But because the kids can be doing that on remote, that might be where they'd also jump into a Zoom and do breakout rooms. So then those students can group together, whether they're on-site or remote, to collaborate and work with one another. Um, and again, that's right through the Zoom, and teachers can facilitate that at that point. Um, and teachers could have that conversation with whatever we're doing on-site with the kids here. So. so hopefully this gives a good picture of what hybrid learning could look like. It may look like here at Oak Park District 97. Again, I've done a lot of work with a lot of staff members here as we've gotten to this point. Um, as well as districts all over the Chicagoland area. So, thank you very much.